snail trails are a very common type of visual defect on a solar farm. They consist of small snail trail-like patterns on crystalline modules. They are very common all over the world and we see hundreds of them each year on solar farms that we carry out site visits on. They're caused by a combination of moisture and air ingress from the back sheet and also the migration of silver nitrates or the, the grid finger material which bleeds out and causes a discoloration in the grid fingers themselves. There's different types of snail trails out there. Some have silver blob type patterns, some just have discoloration of the grid fingers themselves. But the vast majority of them share that they have underlying micro and macro cracks underneath the line of the snail trail itself. Two degrees Kelvin are often asked, do snail trails affect production? And of course, it's, they're the easiest visual defect to identify on a solar farm. So that's why they're so commonly talked about. We believe that although in most cases when we do power testing on them, that they have a minimal effect on power losses. Of course, these snail trails are relatively young. So although they don't have a power effect in the early years, let's say five to 10 years of age, after that, they probably will. We would apply our road to repower process in cases like this to bring our clients through a step-by-step -step process to ensure that they don't actually have to spend the money on more advanced and expensive testing and analysis if they don't need to. We carry out a quantitative assessment first and this would involve the deployment of a high resolution drone survey. We carry out an analysis then on that video footage to count the number of affected modules on site and the number of cells affected on each module. From this information, we'd be able to provide the scale of the problem. If it only affects three or 4% of your site compared with 40 or 50% of the site, then we would take uh, different actions in both cases. If it's justified, then we'd move on to a qualitative assessment. This might include on-site mobile module testing, which is flash and electroluminescence, which will give you some indication of effects on power. Then we'd advise people to send a small sample away to an accredited laboratory to do acceleration tests and to actually project forward the age of the module to see what the likely long-term power losses will be. From there, again, if it's justified, we'll carry out a commercial assessment and proposal where we'd identify the options that a client has, either to pursue a warranty claim and get these modules exchanged, or to apply other methods or possibly revamping and repowering projects and provide return on investment uh, analysis for our clients. Following that, we would provide a solution proposal, which would be a fully engineered document which provides the full breakdown of exactly what we're doing, all of the processes and steps that we need to take to make sure that we're, we're compliant both legally, technically and commercially, and provide confidence to the owners of the site that this investment is worthwhile and will return a profit for their investors. And finally, we would apply project delivery. So we'd make sure that we deploy a, an experienced, uh, engineering level team that would be able to deliver these enhancement, revamp, repower type projects with a lot of data, a high complexity, and make sure that the projects are delivered on time, on budget, and in a safe fashion. So in summary, snail trails are a small problem, I would say, in younger solar farms, but they need to be tracked throughout the age of the site. So a site owner and operator could deploy more regular electroluminescence and flash testing activities on a site and they'd be able to trace then the degradation of these snail trails and their impact on power.